Well, the third comment will be by Sverre Bagge, who needs no introduction in this setting, but of course he's a leading European medieval historian. Please. Well, th <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, yes, I, I also find this uh, concept of ex axial ages very fruitful and stimulating, and there is certainly uh, some, uh, <coughs> some great divide uh, starting around uh, 500 BC, and um, these, uh, the, the, these different civilizations formed by the great religion. On the other hand, as a um, historian, as a medievalist, I would also be interested in focusing more on the differences between these various religious traditions because it seems to me that there are some quite fundamental differences. One is the one between the re religions of Revelation, religions of the book, uh, Judaism, Islam and Christianity uh, versus, for instance, Hinduism, Buddhism and Confucianism. Um, which means that these others are much more strongly dogmatic, missionary, divide, depending a little on, on, on which one of them we are, we are dealing with, um, and also have um, a very strong, in a way, an, an incentive towards uh, uh, social forming societies in, to a greater extent than, than the other ones. Um, in the old empires, one could say that the empire, um, empire come, come first and the religion second. The, 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 the um, religion was an aspect of the existing political structure, whereas in, in the religions of, of revelation, there is a tendency to make religion the primary and the political aspect, the secondary, well, particularly when thinking of the great con 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 conquests of Islam. Um, there is also, I think, and when, when we then go to medieval Europe and Christianity, there is also, we see this, we see the similar, a similar aspect. We see the tendency for the new religion to, to, for the civilization to expand but not necessarily by military means, also by military means, but also in the way, for instance, when Eastern Europe, Northern Europe uh, are included in Western Christendom, it doesn't happen by conquest, by, but by the export of Christianity, which then in turn leads to state formation in these areas. There is also, I think, a very, and here Christianity is at least on the extreme end uh, from this point of view, uh, the bureaucratization of religion, which is very, which is not so strong in Islam, and hardly existing, for instance, in Buddhism, but which is very strong in Christianity, which um, means that um, there is a professional hierarchy, there is a learned elite. Um, attached to the religion, and there is a fairly firm organization from the parish level and up to the papacy at the top of the whole system. There may be tendency in, in the same direction in, in uh, other um, in the other religions, but they are far stronger in Christianity. And I think that's one of the important aspects of the formation of the European civilization in the Middle Ages. And uh, talking about multiple modernities, I quite agree with, with Professor Eisenstadt that there are many ways of being modern. On the other hand, modernity as we know it at a certain historical phase originated in Europe. And then one of the questions uh, historians have to ask is the relationship between uh, between um, Europe and the modernization of the world. Well, that took place from the late 18th century onwards, and which is far after the Middle Ages, which is my uh, speciality. Um, but there must be something in this um, European civilization that served to explain this. Of course, uh, one might object that um, this is a Eurocentric way of thinking, and to some extent it is. On the other hand, the idea is not that Europe from, 
forever from the beginning to the end is something special. It is a particular historical phase where the greatest transformations took place in Europe. Nowadays, we can probably see that uh, Asia is becoming much more important and maybe in some centuries we will discuss why Europe declined in the 20th and 21st century and China ascended and we have the similar debate. So it's nothing, nothing about some kind of inherent superiority in Europe, but something about fi finding the, let's say, the marginal uh, changes in Europe which led to the, uh, to the modern world, the modern globalist world that largely uh, developed as a result of the impulses from Europe, industrialization, modern science, democracy, etc. And in many ways it seems paradoxical <coughs> that these things happen just in Europe where in a certain sense the, relig the, the dogmatism of religion was much stronger the intolerance was much greater, uh, that the, 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 the transformation to what Professor Goldstein called modern rationalism, doubt, etc., took place there. But perhaps it's not so paradoxical after all. That was during, and, the, and one, of the, one of the explanations given is uh, exactly the wars of religion in the 16th century, which were so destructive, so disastrous, that the our idea of tolerance, secularism, evolved as a kind of reaction, as a means of stopping this. Yeah. And you, one could also say that there is a kind of inherent connection between uh, religious dogma, the systematic theology, philosophy, canon law, etc., and modern science. The method, the, the strict method, was transferred from one to the other and may serve as one of the explanations for that, that modern science developed just in Europe. But these are big questions and it's not easy to give any answer to them, but it's, it's quite fascinating to, to deal with and discuss. Thank you. Thank you so much.